Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Firestarter by Stephen King. Before I get started, I'd like to apologise. My voice sounds a bit weird. I am full of cold, but I have finished reading this maybe two, three days ago, and I have to film this review now, because if I don't, I'm going to forget all the things. Now that actually brings me on to one of my first points about this book, which is that actually, with Stephen King's books in general... There's usually so much to them that you can't summarise it all in a review, but I suppose I'm not I'm not too worried about that because I don't want to give away too many spoilers anyway. I will give you a vague overview of what the book is about though. So this book is actually one of Stephen King's earlier releases. It was first published in 1980 when I was minus nine years old. And as you can imagine, because it's published in 1980, it's very different to, I guess, his more modern works in terms of you have to get yourself used to the fact that you are in a different era, so there are no mobile phones, for example. There is one scene where someone is accessing a computer terminal and programming in uh, various commands to it and stuff, which, personally, I don't know whether that was accurate as to how it was then, but it certainly feels weird looking at it with what we know now. I mean, this was written, that would have been nine years before the invention of the internet. So this is pre-internet shit, pre-internet computer ha like hacking going down. So this story follows the story of a father and his daughter. So the dad is called Andy McGee and the daughter is called Charlie McGee. And Andy and his wife, they met each other when they were college students and they both needed some money. So for $200, they both uh, participated in, you know, a scientific clinical trial where they were given this, um, I guess you would call it a mysterious drug. The mom and the dad are both given this drug. Basically, when this drug is given to people, it, bad things happen. A few of them actually went insane. One of them clawed his own eyes out. And a couple committed suicide. One just died. I think one went into a like a catatonic trance. But those who did survive had these strange powers. So Charlie's mother, for example, her psychic ability is that she could open and close doors with the power of her mind. So nothing huge in the grand scheme of things. So that's fine. The dad, he's able to push people. So a bit like a Jedi mind trick, you know. You will show me where those droids were. So anyway, the mom and the dad are both uh, given this, this drug. They both develop these abilities. And not surprisingly, they fall in love with each other and they have a child. And this child is Charlie McGee. Now the thing is, is it turns out these abilities can be passed down the gene pool. And perhaps even there are dormant abilities that aren't there for the mother and father that do appear for Charlie, the daughter. So Charlie is the fire starter of the book's title. Excuse me, the eyes are going now. When I first started reading this book, it actually reminded me a little bit of Carrie, in that there's this young girl with a huge amount of power. I mean, she has so much power. There's a reference in it at one point that... You know, she's a young girl in this book. She starts at maybe six or seven years old and she's able to light fires with the power of her mind. And as we go through the book, we see those powers get stronger and stronger. And there's one conversation in there when they're saying, you know, what happens if she keeps maturing and she gets to the point where her power can literally, you know, split the earth in half or turn, you know, summon the power of the sun. I mean, at one point she melts, like, she's melting metal and all this stuff. I think they said it went up to, like, 4,000 degrees. It went to a point where their instruments couldn't measure it. It's kind of like Carrie, except she's younger than Carrie. Carrie was obviously, what, 14 or something like that in, uh, that was Stephen King's debut novel. This isn't written much after that, which is, I think, why those similarities occurred to me. But what I do think here is it's nice to see... A, um, like a child character, a powerful child character in a Stephen King novel that isn't terrifying. You know, like the twin girls in The Shining, for example. Even Danny in The Shining creeped me out a little bit. It seems to me as though every time there are kids in a Stephen King book, they, they can be quite creepy. Not always, but they often are. In this one, this is a very powerful child who isn't creepy. She's a lovely child. Um, and you as the reader, you just want her to be safe, but at the same time, they're being pursued by government agents. Basically what happened is after the tri uh, after the clinical trials with Andy McGee and his wife, whose name I can't remember, they were monitored for a while by this government agency called The Shop. And basically the these are the people who instigated the trials and they're watching the people who are involved in the trials to see what happens to them, whether they develop new powers, 
uh, whether, you know, basically just to keep an eye on them, the idea is that they could be a national security risk, either if, for example, they, if you get something, somebody as powerful as Charlie, for example, if they decide to take the president down, they're probably going to be able to take the president down. Equally, what happens if the Russians or the Chinese manage to kidnap Charlie and then turn it against the Americans? And it's very much this sense throughout of Charlie and Andy, they're on the run. It starts with them literally, this book starts, goes straight into the action. They're on the run from the shop at an airport and they're trying to get away. And there are kind of two acts to this book, which I, I'm not going to go into too much detail in the plot because I don't want to spoil it. But like I say, we get to see Andy is really just trying to protect his daughter. And when he does use this push, he can use it to a certain extent. He can, For example, he managed to make a taxi driver drive hundreds of miles with a $1 bill just through using the push. But at the same time, it also weakens him. And um, fairly quickly, he notices that the more he pushes, the more he has like dead spots on his face that he can't feel. And it's like the early symptoms of a stroke. So he's got this power, but he can only use it sparingly. Charlie has been trained from a young age not to use her fire starter powers and this is explained really well It's explained in the form of you know if as you have a child you teach them to potty train And you do that over time and you do that because you don't want them to make a mess Imagine if instead of potty training them you're teaching them not to burn the house down It becomes a very very important part of their growing up and how do you train them not to uh, not to start fires well, we tell them that it's a bad thing in the same way that you tell a child when they're potty training If they wet themselves you tell them off and you remind them to use the potty They would do the same but with with the fire when Charlie was younger her parents used to keep fire extinguishers on hand in all of the rooms But they didn't actually talk about her gift. They kind of didn't want to acknowledge it They hoped that if they could keep it under wraps the shop wouldn't then hunt them down now in terms of a lot of the action here it is pretty fast-paced. I especially thought it was fast-paced near the beginning. It did start to slow down after a little while. It's about 510 pages, and I read it over the space of two, three days, but I was spending a lot of time traveling, so that was how I kind of got through it that quickly. It will take you a while, but a lot of stuff does happen along the way, and a lot of the really cool scenes kind of come about when Charlie is pushed and she unleashes this fire ability, and, you know, some of it's quite sad in the... There are like chickens exploding and stuff like that and like cars going up and you know she kills people I'm um, you know that's not a huge spoiler I don't think because it happens relatively early as well and she's just this little girl and you know you just want to protect her you really feel for her there's a great sense of menace here if you've ever seen prison break and you've seen in Prison Break the sense that they're on the run and the government are always after them. That's exactly what this feels like, except this was obviously the precursor to that. And, you know, Stephen King arguably does it better. So you've got the bad guys of the government and they have all of the government's resources at their disposal. I mean, even in 1980, they have a whole heap of technology. And this is literally just the one guy and his daughter. They're trying their best. But equally, mistakes have been made, and um, that leads to tragedy. Uh, and it leads to tragedy before the book even starts. Although I'm not going to tell you how. And there's some pretty brutal scenes in it as well. There's a scene where um, someone... Well, it's not its not even a scene, it's a reminiscence of when somebody uh, found a, a dead body and they'd had their fingernails pulled out and they'd been tortured to reveal information and all that kind of stuff. And this is the American government effectively doing it as well, which I think is partly why it, it builds this real sense, this disturbing sense of this, almost this Orwellian society, you know, and it kind of has to happen as well. You can see if there were people knocking around with the kind of powers that Charlie has got, and for all we know they are, there are and they've been um, kept under wraps, then the government would have to, you know, terminate people with extreme prejudice. They would have to do something to keep this under wraps. And even in the book, actually, King kind of, he um, he will, they'll explain things away, like there'll be a big fire because of Charlie and then it'll be in the news the next day, you know, oil field explodes or whatever it happens to be. And so you actually see the process of the government covering it up. And that makes it worse for Andy and Charlie because where the hell are they going to go? You know, they, they're even talking about sharing their story with the press or something like that but they can't find a decent press outlet that would definitely get them the coverage that also wouldn't be monitored by the the guys from the shop there's this one character who uh, works for the shop and he's called uh, john rainbird and he's an american indian with like a burned face so we can only see he's only got one eye really 
and um, he's he's like a master assassin, but he's also a very good manipulator. And unfortunately for the characters here, there's just something about him that you know when you meet somebody else, and it doesn't happen often. You usually get this vibe from other people, but sometimes you meet somebody and you just can't read them at all. It's almost like there's just a black hole where that person is. And John Rainbird is very much that kind of character, and because of that, their abilities don't stretch to him. Now, Charlie actually, although her main ability is, as the title suggests, as a fire starter, she also does have some other abilities, like, uh, you know, mild psychic abilities and that sort of thing. She can kind of tell when things are going to happen. For example, there's one part where she just turns to her dad and she just knows the police are on their way and she's like we have to get out of here. Everyone is very three-dimensional in this book they're all very believable characters and even though you are dealing with I guess what you would almost call magical realism these days it's just our world obviously in 1980 but it's our world our America but there are these people with these strange abilities and it's interesting to see that clash of you know, the government, our real world government, and then these, you know, almost these like Marvel superheroes. Um, except they're not Marvel superheroes, they're real people. One of them's a seven, six, seven year old girl. Now, I thought this book wasn't going to be anywhere near as good as it was. I was very impressed with it. So, I guess seeing as I feel like death, and you're probably sick of hearing my snotty voice. I will cut to the rating. This book for me, it was a pretty solid 4 out of 5. Again, because with Stephen King it partly suffered with Stephen King syndrome and that it was kind of long. The ending wasn't great, but it was pretty good I would say. I actually feel as though it started really strong, kind of peed out towards the middle and then picked up towards the ending again. Wouldn't be for everybody, but if you are a Stephen King fan you will like this and Charlie I feel as though I've seen more of Charlie in pop culture than I ever realised. I don't think I would have put two and two together. Um, but yeah, I'll read you the blurb here as well quickly. From the author of The Shining, Carrie and the Dead Zone, Stephen King's mesmerising and menacing story of a sinister government agency, a fateful drug experiment and a pigtailed girl named Charlie who has an unimaginably terrifying gift. So there we have it, that's 4 out of 5 stars for Firestarter by Stephen King. If you've read some of his other work, definitely pick this one up, you're going to enjoy it. If you're new to Stephen King, it might not be the best one to start with, but I still think you would enjoy it. Especially if you're into kind of conspiracy thrillers, badass female child characters. Charlie, 7, years, seven year old girl and... She is smashing the patriarchy. She is, you know, she is way more powerful than all these old white men in lab coats who are putting her through all these tests. And she's having none of that. She's like, no, I am my own girl. I'm going to do my own thing. And fair play to her. I would do the same if I could make fire happen. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments whether you've read this book and if not, whether you plan to whether you've read any Stephen King and what your favourite Stephen King book is as well. I'm slowly working my way through them and hopefully when I review my next one I'll be feeling a little bit better. So yeah, thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Bye.